Surname A surname is a name added to a given name and is part of a personal name. In many cases, a surname is a family name and many dictionaries define surname as a synonym of family name. In the Western Hemisphere, it is commonly synonymous with last name, since it is usually placed at the end of a person's given name. In most Hispanophone and Lusophone countries, two or more last names, or surnames, may be used. In China, along with Hungary, Japan, Korea, Madagascar, Vietnam, parts of India and in many other East Asian countries, the family name is placed before a person's given name. The style of having both a family name, surname, and a given name, forename or Christian name, is far from universal. In many countries it is common for ordinary people to have only one name or mononym. The concept of a surname is a relatively recent historical development, evolving from a medieval naming practice called a byname. Based on an individual's occupation or area of residence, a byname would be used in situations where more than one person had the same name. Order of Names In some cultures, including those of most Western countries, the surname or family name, last name is placed after the personal or given name, first name. In other cultures the surname is placed first, followed by the given name or names. This is the case in Hungary, parts of Romania, South India, Sri Lanka, Madagascar and countries in the Chinese cultural sphere including Japan, Korea, Taiwan, Vietnam and China. In Japan, Taiwan, and Hong Kong, when people write their personal name in the Latin alphabet, it is common to reverse the order of the given and family names for the convenience of Westerners, so that they know which name is the family name for official formal purposes. Reversing the order of names for the same reason is also customary for the Baltic Fennic peoples and the Hungarians, but other Uralic peoples traditionally did not have surnames, perhaps because of the clan structure of their societies. Surnames have been imposed by dominant authorities, evangelists, then administrations. Thus, the Samis saw no change or a transformation of their name, for example, Samsaya became Siri, Hater Jagthkos Arslat became a Slap Jacobson Hater, as was the norm. However recently, integration into the EU and increased communications with foreigners prompted many Samis to reverse the order of their full name to given name followed by surname, to avoid their given name being mistaken for and used as a surname. In France, Slovenia, and Italy, administrative usage is to put the surname before the first on official documents. Indian surnames often denote caste, profession, village etc. and are invariably mentioned along with the personal names. However, hereditary last names are not universal. In Indian passports the surname is shown first. In telephone directories the surname is used for collation. In North Indian states the surname is placed after given names where it exists. In South India, where use of two names is by no means universal, Surname is placed before personal name and in most cases it is only shown as an initial, for example S. For Suyapith. In English, although the usual order of names is first middle last, for the purpose of cataloguing in libraries and inciting the names of authors in scholarly papers, the order is changed to last, first middle, with the last and first names separated by a comma, and items are alphabetized by the last name. Compound surnames While surnames are usually one word, in some cases, known as compound surnames, a surname comprises more than one word. Spanish compound surnames In most Spanish-speaking countries, the custom is for people to have two surnames. Thus, for instance, Spanish ex-premier José Luis Rodríguez Saporto has José Luis as his given name, Rodríguez as his first, that is paternal, surname, and Zapata was his second, that is maternal, surname. This custom, however, is not seen in the Hispanic world as being a true compound surname system per se, since it is widely understood that the first surname denotes one's father's family, and the second surname denotes one's mother's family. So Rodríguez Zapata is not in fact one surname, it is two distinct surnames. Given that it is not a true compound surname, 
his children do not inherit the compound surname Rodriguez Saportero. Only the paternal surname of both father and mother are passed on. The father's paternal surname becomes the child's own paternal surname, while the mother's paternal surname becomes the child's second surname, as the child's own maternal surname. Thus, Jose Luis Rodriguez Saportero would pass on only Rodriguez to his children as their first, that is paternal, surname. True Compound Surnames Beyond this seemingly compound surname system in the Hispanic world, there are also true compound surnames in the Spanish-speaking countries. These true compound surnames are passed on, and inherited, as compounds. Thus, for instance, former chairman of the Supreme Military Junta of Ecuador, General Luis Telmo Paz y Mino Estrella, has Luis as his first given name, Telmo as his middle name, the true compound surname Paz y Mino as his first, that is paternal, surname, and Estrella as his second, that is maternal, surname. Thus, Luis Telmo Paz y Mino Estrella is also known more casually as Luis Paz y Mino, Telmo Paz y Mino, or Luis Telmo Paz y Mino. He would never be regarded as Luis Estrella, or Telmo Estrella, or Luis Telmo Estrella, nor as Luis Paz, or Telmo Paz, or Luis Telmo Paz. This is because Paz alone is not his surname, although Paz on its own exists as a surname. In this case, Paz y Mino is in fact the paternal surname, being a true compound surname. His children, therefore, would inherit the compound surname Paz y Mino as their paternal surname, while Estrella would be lost, since the mother's paternal surname becomes the children's second surname, as their own maternal surname. Paz alone would not be passed on, nor would Mino alone. To avoid ambiguity, one might often informally see these true compound surnames hyphenated, for instance, as Paz y Mino. This is true especially in the Anglosphere, but also sometimes even in the Hispanic world, since to many Hispanics unfamiliar with this and other compound surnames, Paz y Mino might be inadvertently mistaken as Paz for the paternal surname and Mino for the maternal surname. Although Mino did start off as the maternal surname and this compound surname, it was many generations ago, around five centuries, that it became compounded, and henceforth inherited and passed on as a compound. Other surnames which started off as compounds of two or more surnames, but which merged into one single word, also exist. An example would be the surname Pazmino, whose members are related to the Paz y Mino, as both descend from the Pazmino family of five centuries ago. Alava Compound Surnames Alava, Spain, is notorious for its incidence of true compound surnames, known as Apelido Compuesto Alaves, Alava Compound Surname. It is typical to Alava, in the Basque country of Spain. And like other true compound surnames, which resulted from the merging of a previously paternal and maternal surname, the Alava Compound Surname is characterized for having the first portion of the surname as a patronymic normally a Spanish patronymic, that is from the Castilian language, or more seldomly a Basque language patronymic, followed by the preposition de, with the second part of the surname being a local toponymic surname from a lava. While this form of compound surname can be found in other regions of Spain, albeit scarcely, it is only in a lava that it has persisted. These type of customary compound surnames used to be found throughout Guipuzco, Navarra, Soria, Logrono, and most of Green Spain generally, that is the Spanish northern maritime facade exposed to the Atlantic Ocean which runs along the coastal strip line north of the Cantabrian and Basque Mountains, along the Bay of Biscay. English Compound Surnames Compound surnames in English, and several other European cultures, feature two, or occasionally more, words, often joined by a hyphen or hyphens. However, it is not unusual for compound surnames to be composed of separate words not linked by a hyphen, for example Ian Duncan Smith, a former leader of the British Conservative Party, whose surname is Duncan Smith. Formation Name etymologists classify European surnames under five categories, depending on their origin, given name, occupational name, location name, nickname, and ornamental name. 
This classification can be extended to surnames originating elsewhere. Given name These may be a simple first name such as Wilhelm, a patronymic such as Anderson, a matronymic such as Beaton, or a clan name such as O'Brien. Multiple surnames may be derived from a single given name, for example there are thought to be over 90 Italian surnames based on the given name Giovanni. Occupational name Occupational names include such simple examples as Smith, Miller, Farmer, Thatcher, Shepherd etc. as well as non-English ones such as Eisenhower, Iron Worker, later anglicized in America as Eisenhower or Schneider, Taylor. There are also more complicated names based on occupational titles. In England it was common for servants to take a modified version of their employer's occupational first name as their last name, adding the letter S to the word, although this formation could also be a patronymic. For instance, the surname Vickers is thought to have arisen as an occupational name adopted by the servant of a vicar, while Roberts could have been adopted by either the son or the servant of a man named Robert. A subset of occupational names in English are names thought to be derived from the medieval mystery plays. The participants would often play the same roles for life, passing the part down to their oldest sons. Names derived from this may include king, lord, virgin, and death. The last is often wrongly thought to be an anglicization of the French name Darth. It is now thought that the surname Darth arose well after the surname Death was first used. Vaidur is another instance of occupational surname prevailed in Kerala, a southern state in India, particularly among the families who traditionally followed the medical practice of Ayurveda. Location name Location, toponymic, habitation, names derived from the inhabited location associated with the person given that name. Such locations can be any type of settlement, such as, homesteads, farms, enclosures, villages, hamlets, strongholds or cottages. One element of a habitation name may describe the type of settlement. Examples of Old English elements frequently found in the second element of habitational names The habitative elements in such names can differ in meaning, according to different periods, different locations, or with being used with certain other elements. For example, the Old English element ton may have originally meant enclosure in one name, but can have meant farmstead, village, manor, or estate in other names. Location names, or habitation names, may be as generic as Monte, Portuguese for mountain, Gorski, Polish for hill or pit, variant of pit, but may also refer to specific locations. Washington, for instance, is thought to mean the homestead of the family of Wassa, while Luci likely means resident of Lucca. Although some surnames, such as London, Lisbo, or Beowistock are derived from large cities, more people reflect the names of smaller communities, as in Oak Reach Hall, derived from a village in County Galway. This is thought to be due to the tendency in Europe during the Middle Ages for migration to chiefly be from smaller communities to the cities, and the need for new arrivals to choose a defining surname. In Portuguese-speaking countries, it is not uncommon to find surnames derived from names of countries, such as Portugal, Franca, Brazil, Holanda. Many Japanese surnames derive from geographical features. For example, Ishikawa, Shichuan, means Stone River, Yamamoto, Shanben, means the base of the mountain, and Anu, Jingshang, means above the well. Arabic names sometimes contain surnames that denote the city of origin, for example, in cases of Saddam Hussein al Tikriti, meaning Saddam Hussein of Tikrit, a city in Iraq. This component of the name is called an isbar. Nicknames These include names, also known as eek names, based on appearance such as Schwarzkopf, Short, and probably Caesar, and names based on temperament and personality such as Daft, Gutman, and Maiden, which according to a number of sources was an English nickname meaning effeminate. When Jewish families in Central Europe were forced to adopt surnames in the 18th and 19th centuries, those who failed to choose a surname were often given pejorative or even cruel nicknames, such as Schweinmann, Pigman or Schmutz, a variant of filthy by the local registrar. 
Many families later changed these names. Ornamental name Ornamental names as surnames are more common in communities which adopted, or were forced to adopt, surnames in the 18th and 19th centuries, and are common among Jewish families and in Scandinavia. Examples include Morgenstern, Morning Star, Sapphire, Sapphire, and Race, Branch. In some cases, such as Chinese Indonesians and Chinese Thais, certain ethnic groups are subject to political pressure to change their surnames, in which case surnames can lose their family name meaning. For instance, Indonesian business tycoon Liam Swilang, Lin Shaw Liang, Indonesianized his name to Sudono Salim. In this case Liam, Lin, was rendered by Salim, a name of Arabic origin, while Sudono, a Javanese name with the honorific prefix Su of Sanskrit origin, was supposed to be a rendering of Swilang. During the transatlantic slave trade, of Africans, Many Africans lost their native names and were forced to take the surnames of their slave masters and any given name the slave master desired. Gender-specific versions of surname In some cultures, such as Greek, Russian, Slovak, Czech, etc. surnames change form depending on the gender of the bearer. For example in Greece, if a man called Papadopoulos has a daughter, she will likely be named Papadopoulou. If the couple have decided their offspring will take the father's surname, since that name has a female version. In Poland, if the husband is named Podwinski, and his wife takes his surname, her last name, and those of their unmarried daughters, would be Podwinska. The sons would be known as Podwinski. In Lithuania, if the husband is named Vilkas, his wife will be named Vilkan and his daughter will be named Vilkaite. In Slovakia and Czech Republic alike, if a man is called Novak, the wife adds a feminine suffix over to his surname after the marriage, hence Novikova. The same is true for daughters which almost always inherit the father's surname with the feminine suffix. Other The meanings of some names are unknown or unclear. The most common European name in this category may be the Irish name Ryan, which means Little King in Irish Gaelic. Other surnames may have arisen from more than one source. The name De Luca, for instance, likely arose either in or near Lucania or in the family of someone named Lucas or Lucius. In some instances, however, the name may have arisen from Lucca, with the spelling and pronunciation changing over time and with emigration. The same name may appear in different cultures by coincidence or romanization. The surname Li is used in English culture, but is also a romanization of the Chinese surname Li. Surname origins have been the subject of much folk etymology. Surnames were uncommon prior to the 12th century, and still somewhat rare into the 13th. Most European surnames were originally occupational or locational, and served to distinguish one person from another if they happened to live near one another. For example, two different people named John could conceivably be identified as John Butcher and John Chandler. This still happens, in some communities where a surname is particularly common, for example on the Isle of Lewis in Scotland, many residents have the family name MacLeod, son of Lewis, and so may still be known by a surname symbolizing their occupation such as Kevin the Post and Kevin Handbag. In French Canada until the 19th century, several families adopted surnames that followed the family name in order to distinguish the various branches of a large family. Such a surname was preceded by the word dit, said and was known as a nom dit, said name. Compare with some Roman naming conventions. While this tradition is no longer in use, in many cases the nom dit has come to replace the original family name. Thus the Burbo family has split into Burbo dit Verville, Burbo dit Lacousse, and Burbo dit Beechson. In many cases Verville, Lacousse, or Beechson has become the new family name. Likewise, the Rivard family has split into the River Dit Laven, River Dit Laranger, and River Dit Lanoy. The origin of the nom dit can vary. Often it denoted a geographical trait of the area where that branch of the family lived. Burville lived towards the city, Beechson lived near an oak tree, La Rivia near a river, etc. Some of the oldest noms dits are derived from the war name of a settler who served in the army or militia, Tranquemontan, Mountain Slasher. Cholikur, Braveheart. 
others denote a personal trait, Lacousse might have been a fast runner, Legrand was probably tall, etc. Surname formed from a parrot's name The Icelandic system, formerly used in much of Scandinavia, does not use family names. A person's last name indicates the first name of his or her father, patronymic, or in some cases mother, matronymic. Many common family names in other Scandinavian countries are a result of this naming practice, such as Hansen, son of Hans, Johansson, son of Johan, and Olsen, son of Olola, the three most common surnames in Norway. Patronymic name conventions are similar in some other nations, including Malaysia, see Malaysian name, and other Muslim countries, among most people of the Indian states of Tamil Nadu and Kerala. Unlike another Indian state Andhra Pradesh, where ancestral origin village names have become surnames for the people, in Mongolia and in the Scottish Gaelic personal naming system. In Russia and Bulgaria, both patronymic and family name are obligatory parts of one's full name, for example if a Russian is called Ivan Andreevich Serguev, that means that his father's name is Andre and his family name is Serguev. A similar system is used in Greece. In Ethiopia and Eritrea, a child adopts the given name of one of their parents, usually the father, as a pseudo-surname. For example, Abraham Mesfin's father's first name would have been Mesfin, while Abraham Mesfin's child might be called Nestinet Abraham. Just as in Iceland, referring to Abraham Mesfin as Mr. Mesfin would be erroneous, the correct term would be Mr. Abraham. Very rarely do children adopt their mother's given name, who in any case would retain their pseudo-surname. Hebrew Patronymic Names As part of Hebrew patronymic names, Ben is followed by the father's name, for example Ben Adam, Hebrew, BNDM, or Abraham Ben Abraham. Ba, son of an Aramaic, is used likewise, for example Mu Bar Elan. Ben, Hebrew, Bean, son of, also forms part of Hebrew names. For example, Benjamin. Culture and prevalence. In the United States, 1,712 surnames cover 50% of the population, and about 1% of the population has the surname Smith, which is also the most frequent English name and an occupational name, metalworker, a contraction, for instance, of blacksmith or ironsmith, among others. Several American surnames are a result of corruptions or phonetic misappropriations of European surnames, though often not, as commonly stated, as a result of the registration process at the immigration entry points. Spellings and pronunciations of names remain fluid in the United States until the social security system enforced standardization. Approximately 70% of Canadians have surnames that are of English, Irish, French, or Scottish derivation. According to some estimates, 85% of China's population shares just 100 surnames. The names Wang, Zhang and Li are the most frequent. Spanish-speaking world In Spain and in most Spanish-speaking countries, the custom is for people to have two surnames. Usually the first surname comes from the father and the second from the mother, but it could be the other way round. A child's first surname will usually be their father's first surname, while the child's second surname will usually be the mother's first surname. For example, if Jose Garcia Torres and Maria Acosta Gomez had a child named Paul, then his full name would be Paul Garcia Acosta. One family member's relationship to another can often be identified by the various combinations and permutations of surnames. In Spain, especially Catalonia, the paternal and maternal surnames are often combined using Y, Spanish, or I. In Catalan, see for example the economist Xavier Salai Martin or painter Salvador Dali I Domnec. In Spain, a woman does not change her legal surnames when she marries. In some Spanish-speaking countries in Latin America, a woman may, on her marriage, drop her mother's surname and add her husband's surname to her father's surname using the preposition de, of. For example, if Clara Reyes Alba were to marry Alberto Gomez Rodriguez, the wife could use Clara Reyes de Gomez as her name, or Clara Reyes Gomez, or, rarely, Clara Gomez Reyes. 
she can be addressed as Srada Gomez corresponding to Mrs. Gomez. In some countries, this form may be mainly social and not an official name change, that is her name would still legally be her birth name. This custom of adding the husband's surname is slowly fading. Children take the surnames of both parents, so if the couple above had two children named Andres, and Ana, then their names would be Andres Gomez Reyes, and Ana Gomez Reyes. In Spain, a 1995 reform in the law allows the parents to choose whether the father's or the mother's surname goes first, although this order must be the same for all their children. For instance, the name of the son of the couple in the example above could be either Andres Gomez Reyes, or Andres Reyes Gomez. Sometimes, for single mothers or when the father would or could not recognize the child, the mother's surname has been used twice, for example, Ana Reyes Reyes. In Spain, however, children with just one parent receive both surnames of that parent, although the order may also be changed. In 1973 in Chile, the law was changed to avoid stigmatizing illegitimate children with the maternal surname repeated. It should be noted that some Hispanic people, after leaving their country, drop their maternal surname, even if not formally, so as to better fit into the non-Hispanic society they live or work in. Dropping the paternal surname is not unusual when it is a very common one. For instance, Painter Pablo Ruiz Picasso and Spanish Prime Minister José Luis Rodríguez Zapatero are known by their maternal surnames as Picasso and Zapatero. Similarly, Anglophones with just one surname may be asked to provide a second surname on official documents in Spanish-speaking countries. When none, such as the mother's maiden name, is provided, the last name may simply be repeated. In some churches, such as the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, where the family structure is emphasized, as well as legal marriage, the wife is referred to as her mana plus the surname of her husband. And most records of the church follow that structure as well. A new trend in the United States for Hispanics is to hyphenate their father's and mother's last names. This is done because American-born English speakers are not aware of the Hispanic custom of using two last names and thus mistake the first last name of the individual for a middle name. In doing so they would, for example, mistakenly refer to Esteban Alvarez Cobos as Esteban A. Cobos. Such confusion can be particularly troublesome in official matters. To avoid such mistakes, Esteban Alvarez Cobos would become Esteban Alvarez Cobos to clarify that both are last names. Argentina In Argentina, women traditionally used their husband's last name after de. There are some province offices where a married woman can use only her birth name, and some others where she has to use the complete name, for legal purposes. The Argentine Civilian Code states both uses are correct, but police offices and passports are issued with their complete name. Today most women prefer to maintain their birth name given that de can be interpreted as meaning they belong to their husbands. When Eva de Hort married Juan Domingo Perón, she could be addressed as Eva de Hort de Perón, but the preferred style was Eva Perón, or the familiar and affectionate Evita, Little Eva. Combined names come from old traditional families and are considered one last name, but are rare. This is due to the fact that although Argentina is a Spanish-speaking country, it is also composed of other varied European influences, such as Italian, French, Russian, German, etc. Children typically use their father's last names only. Some state offices have started to use both last names, in the traditional father-then-mother order, to reduce the risk of a person being mistaken for others using the same name combinations, for example if Eva de Hort and Juan Perón had a child named Juan, he might be misidentified if he were called Juan Perón, but not if he was known as Juan Perón de Hort. In early 2008, some new legislation is under consideration that will place the mother's last name ahead the father's last name, as it is done in Portuguese-speaking countries and only optionally in Spain, despite Argentina being a Spanish-speaking country. Chile In Chile, Marriage has no effect at all on either of the spouse's names, so people keep their birth names for all their life, no matter how many times marital status, theirs or that of their parents, may change. However, in some circles, 
it is still customary for a wife to use her husband's name as reference, as in Doña Maria Ines de Ramirez, literally Lady Maria Ines, wife of, Ramirez. Children will always bear the surname of the father followed by that of the mother, but if there is no known father and the mother is single, the children can bear either both of her mother's surnames or the mother's first surname followed by any of the surnames of the mother's parents or grandparents, or the child may bear the mother's first surname twice in a row. Portuguese-speaking world In general, the traditions followed in countries like Brazil, Portugal and Angola are almost similar to the ones of Spain. The Spanish tradition, usually the father's surname comes first, followed by the mother's surname, whereas in Portuguese-speaking countries the father's name is the last, mother's coming first. A woman may adopt her husband's surname, S, but nevertheless she usually keeps her birth names, or at least the last one. Since 1977, a husband can also adopt his wife's surname. When this happens, usually both spouses change their name after marriage. The custom of a woman changing her name upon marriage is recent. It spread in the late 19th century in the upper classes, under French influence, and in the 20th century, particularly during the 1930s and 1940, it became socially almost obligatory. Nowadays, fewer women adopt, even officially, their husbands' names, and among those who do so officially, it is quite common not to use it either in their professional or informal life. Until the end of the 19th century it was common for women, especially those from a very poor background, not to have a surname and so to be known only by her first name. She would then adopt her husband's full surname after marriage. With the advent of republicanism in Brazil and Portugal, along with the institution of civil registries, all children now have surnames. For the children, some bear only the last surnames of the parents. For example, Carlos da Silva Goncalves and Ana Luisa de Albuquerque Pereira, Goncalves, in case she adopted her husband's name after marriage, would have a child named Lucas Pereira Goncalves. However, the child may have any other combination of the parents' surnames, according to euphony, social significance or other reasons. Indian Surnames in India, surnames are placed as last names or before first names, which often denote village of origin, caste, clan, office of authority their ancestors held, or trades of their ancestors. The largest variety of surnames is found in the state of Maharashtra, which numbers more than the rest of India together. In Maharashtra surnames are placed last, the order being, the given name, followed by the father's name, followed by the family name. The majority of surnames are derived from the village where the family lived, with the caste suffix, for example, Mamika, Punka, or Andhrabadka. In Andhra Pradesh, surnames usually denote family names. It is easy to track family history, caste they belong to, using surnames.